Just Great. Thank you. Uh, well, what I wanted to uh, share with you, and I hope this can be kind of interactive, um, not, not so much a lecture, but just an exploration of the Classroom Ecosystem Explorer. Uh, this is a website that uh, is now on the internet. If you Google Classroom Ecosystem Explorer, um, you come to it and it's, uh, it was a collaborative project with some teachers at the laboratory school at UCLA where for some years I was the research director uh, before I retired and um, I met some teachers who were doing very interesting teaching of science with very young children kindergarten and first grade classrooms uh, and they alternated between life sciences one year taught thematically across the year the uh, issues around the uh, life cycle of plants and their relationships with pollinators. Um, that was one, that's a more usual kind of thing to do with little kids. Uh, but then in alternate years, they taught the physics of matter, energy, and motion. Um, and uh, we put together with them a website that shows how they did that teaching of physics with, with very young children. Um, and, and the reason that I like to share it uh, and get feedback on it is that it's still in, sort of in, uh, it may have a new uh, life in development, um, um, but it's, um, the, the other reason for show, and, and so we want feedback, but the other reason to show it is as a way of thinking about how complicated it is to show complicated teaching practice. So I'd like to sort of frame this as problems of representation. And even when you have a website, you have video, you have uh, commentary which was written by the teachers uh, and video uh, selected or directed uh, by them. Um, we videotaped but they said be sure to videotape this scene, that scene, these are the things that another teacher would need to be able to see to, to understand how how we do what we're trying to do. And, and, and our aim was to, you, in the website, kind of show uh, a lot about the backstage aspects of, of teaching, not just what you can see in a video clip. Um, so um, I'm going to take you through some of this um, a, as a way of, um, and I realized I have notes about that. I'll get them in a minute. Um, uh, we're going to, we hope that this is going to be uh, taken over by um, a, a relatively new publisher called Caslon, C-A-S-L-O-N, you may be, you're nodding. Um, uh, they do, I, I, I think, as I've looked at their, their materials for continuing education for teachers, they're, they're doing some good stuff. And um, we're hoping that they will take the website over and it will be still available for free, but there will be another version of it maybe that, uh, that you need to uh, uh, pay a little fee for uh, use. Uh, but um, we're hoping that it will continue in some form to be available for free. Uh, so if you just Google Classroom Ecosystem Explorer, uh, it gets you to the URL, uh, and I hope you will revisit afterwards. And and any any of you, if you want to send me an email with feedback, I I'd, I'd really appreciate it. Um, the, just some of you were at my talk yesterday, and I neglected to say. Um, 
a number of things. <laughs> but but uh, one of the a point I was going to make was that, that one of the things that's changed with the media um, is that it's now much easier to uh, let uh, reader audiences access um, video uh, than it used to be. And there are video examples in my uh, fairly recent book, the book called Talk on Social Theory, has four examples chapters in it. And those are available if any of you wanted to look at them. But the URL that's printed in the in the book is no longer operative. Things changed. <laughs> and, and so if you just Google Frederick Erickson talk on social theory, uh, it'll get to it. Or you can go to my faculty website. I still, as an emeritus professor, have a faculty website at UCLA. That's basically what the other does. Uh, if you go to that, you can get to these uh, video examples that go with transcript and discussion in chapters in the book. And, and the relatively easy availability like that is, I think, very much potentially going to change the field. Because if we did uh, close analysis of, of audiovisual records 30 years ago, uh, the only way anybody could see it is if you schlepped equipment to a, a, a workshop or you, you know you brought it brought it physically here um, uh, or to AERA or whatever and and now that that world is very much changing and um, so uh, that's uh, th that's a point to make both about access to the website but also to that other material of mine. Anyway, so uh, the, the notion um, that we, we had was that we wanted to show the backstage aspects of the how of this kind of teaching and learning with little kids. And the teachers uh, helped write the text, the commentary text that goes with this. And we thought for a long time about how to organize the website in a way that would kind of teach people how to use it as they go along. And uh, so this is what we came up with. It, maybe we should shut the lights off uh, so you can, can really see. Um, Part of what we puzzled over for a long time was the major headings or components of the practice uh, around which we might organize the website. And we ended up um, with uh, five. Planning, uh, classroom setup involving uh, how you set up spaces for this kind of teaching, uh, display of student work, and, and, uh, and uh, the kinds of resources you need to have access to uh, for this kind of teaching. What we we're calling classroom culture, we're thinking about changing that with this, with Caslon, uh, the idea is we're gonna, we're producing a little book that will be standalone about the practice, but also will be like linked to the website and a kind of a user's guide to the website. And, and we're changing, I can't remember what the new term is, but, but at any rate, uh, classroom culture in the set of, in the sense of social relationships, uh, relationships among students, to students and teacher to student. And um, then learning experiences um, uh, that are provided uh, in the instruction for children. Uh, and we distinguish between first-hand experiences, second-hand and third-hand. And I'll show you some of that. And then representations 
of students' understanding, student work that is, is designed to be diagnostic of their understanding. So the teacher, uh, looking at what the kids are doing, can see whether or not they're, they're, um, they're getting what, what is being taught. Um, and uh, then there are video examples for, for all of these subheadings under the five um, components of the ecosystem. But one of the, one of the f kind of relentless ideas behind the way we put the website together is that this is an ecosystem that, that uh, every time you change um, something in the experiences that you uh, are providing as learning experience for kids. There are implications for people's social relationships, uh, classroom setup. Uh, you have to plan for the experiences and, and it may be that uh, different kinds of representation need to be um, uh, thought up uh, as a way of uh, checking uh, kids' understanding and solidifying their understanding. And um, so, so all components of the ecosystem are mutually influencing each other all the time. Now, you know all that, but you also know that there are a lot of teachers who put together classrooms that have components of practice that don't fit with each other, right? One of the things that goes wrong uh, is you, uh, you, you know, you planned something, but uh, you didn't think enough about the kind of space uh, that it's going to, arrangements that it's going to take to really get, uh, enable kids to get involved with the ideas that you want them to uh, encounter in, in the pedagogy. And so, um, so this idea that, that um, all of the five components are mutually influencing is something that, that we tried to build the website to show. Um, and and um, the other thing that we, uh, that we built in, um, I'll just tell you about quickly, but then I'm going to demonstrate um, this, is that uh, for the video examples, unlike some other websites that I, we looked at as we were, we were building this, where they, especially in the early days of posting video examples, it seemed as if the developers had the notion that the the video clip would speak for itself. You know, there's the video, and you're going to see in it what I, as the developer, see in it. And um, uh, I had enough experience with teachers looking at unedited video footage for the last almost 40 years now that I knew that wasn't the case. You can see anything you want to in a video clip. And, and, and one of the anxieties uh, that we had about presenting people's work to other teachers in a website is that you can navigate around from clip to clip and, and read into that whatever you know, inferences you want to. Uh, and unlike a documentary film where the editor puts together a kind of narrative portrayal that heavily constrains uh, the interpretations that the viewers uh, 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 take away from looking at the, uh, the documentary, um, the website is, is a much more open you know, navigation experience and interpretation experience. And, and so we tried to, on one hand, take advantage of that, but not just let people wander around uh, with a bunch of indexed video clips without some scaffolding for them, interpretive scaffolding. And that took a long time to think through and write up.
But one of the things that we came up with as an aid for people's moving from just moving toward real exploration into the how of complex practice rather than just being a tourist looking at the, the, the strange customs of, of these people who are teaching physics with little kids. Um, moving from tourism to deeper exploration, uh, we think is facilitated here by some stop frame um, commentary that is built into the video clips. And, and so I'm going to show you uh, an example of uh, various examples. And the first time around, you get a naked video clip. And then you're asked to view it again. And there are stop buttons along the way with the freeze frame and a little, like a silent movie. Um, text that says, notice this about, you maybe didn't notice that the teacher was doing this. And, um, uh, uh, and then we took that one step further. That's, and and that, that's the really original part of this. And our, our, um, our um, instruction tutorial built in at the beginning doesn't explain this because we came up with it after the tutorial had been built and we'd run out of money and we didn't. So I just have to tell you and I'll, I'll show you how to find the next thing, which is that, that for subsequent viewings of the same clip, if you wanted to view it over and over and over, you can access commentary from all of the different components. We realized that every clip, if it's an ecosystem, every clip has everything in it. You know, a clip that is our best illustration of first-hand experiences for kids, uh, that had to have been planned. And so there's some, some commentary on planning that would illuminate your your repeated viewing, so you can you can go to experiences or representation, and and end up clicking on comments, on planning, on setup, on culture, uh, and and so on. And and as you do that, uh, you get deeper and deeper into kind of ways of paying attention to the information that there's there on the video clip. And also, you get influenced to view it the way we want you to view it, <laughs> instead of some uh, something else, you know. So often, um, in this kind of pedagogy, some teachers watch it initially, and they say, well, you know, the kids are making too much noise, or you know, they're moving around the room too much or something. And, and so to get past that, we built in these multiple viewings um, in the design. So that, that's, that's what we were after. And now I, gotta, I had figured out a sequence to show you. And here it is. Um, OK. So let's just um, look. Um, look at at uh, at a few clips. Um, this is a little creaky, but um, the the if you're asking kids to do serious classroom work, um, and it's going to be a good workplace, you have to pay a lot of attention to the organization of space to facilitate their work and not interfere with it. And so one of the things that we built in is a little tour of uh, one of these classrooms. This is actually um, a stop button. I'm, I'm, let me go. Um, I don't know why that happened. Let me just um, go back again. Here, uh, no, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, space. Here. 
Right. This is without stop button. This is just rotating the camera around one of the kindergarten first grade classrooms. And um, uh, you get a sense of, of some things that are there. But we discovered that the lab school at UCLA, which has been there since 1882, it's older than the Dewey School, it's older than Bank Street, it's older than uh, some other famous uh, places. It was created as a demonstration school to go with the normal school when the southern branch of that moved to LA in 1882. And visitors come all the time to, to, to visit the classrooms. And we've realized over the years that the visitors don't necessarily know what to look for, right? So we built in this little map uh, that you can freeze on and, and uh, uh, just a tour of the basic space. But then now the second time around, it says you'll see more information at key points in the video. And there's these little green dots are the stop places for written commentary. Uh, and so here's the first one. Okay, the strategic arrangement uh, of uh, cabinets and bookcases provides a space for children's imaginary play, a key component of young children's learning, and so on and so on. So, so, but you can also see about planning by going up here to this little interconnection lens icon. Uh, and uh, then when you go back and play it again, you can get stop buttons for planning. And I, I missed it because, OK, here we go. Okay, with a variety of spatial configurations, children can work on different aspects of a collaborative project simultaneously. In planning a project, it's important to think about different ways that space, both inside and outside the classroom, can support the project. Okay, now, you know, that's not a big idea, but, but if you'd never seen this kind of teaching, right, uh, you might not think about that. Uh, you might take some of these um, uh, things for granted, and and uh, um, uh, there's also yeah, and, 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 what am I? I'm, I I screwed this up. I'm sorry. I I'm still I'm still a little. Yeah, so let's look about at uh, student experiences. As we go around, we'll take it over here and see what the comment says. Okay, including lots of books and comfortable reading spaces in the classroom set up encourages children to explore reading materials that support whatever they're learning about in their first-hand experiences and so on. So anyway, so the interconnection lenses and multiple stop buttons for multiple revisiting of a clip um, is the major innovation here in, 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 in the way we work. And let me just show you some more clips. Um, uh, we want to, uh, let's, one of my favorite actually is, is the teachers every year uh, have a culminating project that kind of starts in February and continues till early June, at the end of the year. And um, in this year where they were uh, teaching the physics of uh, energy, matter, energy, and motion. Um, they they uh, uh, came up with the idea of uh, of simple machines that make work easier, 
and uh, maybe there should be a project around a simple machine that would make work easier and what eventuated was a, uh, a, a be, there are two adjoining classrooms that the teachers were co cooperating across rooms and they, they ended up building a roller coaster that connected the two classrooms outdoors and you could send messages back and forth uh, between the classrooms on the roller coaster. That's the that's a project, okay? And but but they haven't got that yet. This is early February and they're musing about it over lunch. And one of the reasons I like this clip so much is because uh, one of the teachers um, gets kind of excited and talks with her mouth full of sandwich. Uh, <laughs> so, they're discussing possibilities for a long-term project through which students will demonstrate their understanding of the basic concepts. And so, the next step would be to talk to the children about how we could make, what they could design for our classroom or outside the classroom, like in the block area or in the playground, to make their play or the work easier. And this is where I could put math in. You could try it the way it exists now, and then time it to see the thing, the thing that they make. Does it make it faster? Mm. Or which is faster, mm. which is slower? That's, a great That's idea. great to see if you know. It, uh, uh, let's just stop for a minute. Mm -hmm. What's our goal? If we start with that, we can think about where to guide them next. I know that, that we want to, the kids to engage in a long-term project, and that long-term project will be about designing, building. It's to make work easier. easier. Because, that's, because that's if we goal. were going back to designing toys, I think we'd get way off of what, where we would want them to go. So, mm -hmm. Something else, there's a little I button here that you can stop at any point, and it gives you a little index to the content that's being uh, pertinent to the clip. So energy, uh, big idea uh, behind this is symptoms, uh, systems, the, the concept they're thinking about is the notion that simple machines make work easier. And, and um, this goes back to um, state and national standards. Um, and, and for every clip, you can, you can pull that up at any time you want to as, as you're watching. Um, so anyway, so the, 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 there's careful planning, very careful planning. And, and um, the backstage, this is part of the backstage, right? Uh, this isn't what the principal sees when she walks in and looks at something going on in the classroom. This is part of what produces that, and these, te these teachers were very careful about that. Um, um, okay, so um, let's take a look at an example of first-hand learning experiences. Um, uh, this is another of my favorites. Um, uh, and and this is um, a, a different scene on the theme of simple machines make work easier. Um, and that doesn't need a lot of explanation. See, what they're trying to do is pound a nail without a hammer, right? And then with the simple machine, the hammer, uh, they find that it's a lot easier to, to uh, pound the nail. Um, okay, now they go and get a simple machine. This 
just showing that I'm pulling it out with a hammer. Let me. Okay. Yeah, I'm pulling it out, and here it is. Then you write about it. Okay, but where's your where's your first one? Aha, that's with your hand. Okay, now then you're just going to remark underneath each one, where did you use the most energy? Okay. My muscles. Well, was it more energy for you with using your hands? Was it easier with the tool? Were you it was using... easier with the tool. Okay, so I need to know that. I need to know which one made your work easier. Uh, which one, one, where did you use less oh, energy? Okay. Okay, and then there's stop button comments on that, and you can also index the other components and whatnot. Um, here's another um, 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 wait a minute. The um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do this one, too. A second-hand experience is a demonstration of some sort. Um, uh, first-hand is actually, you know, hammering or doing something like that. Uh, a second-hand experience is, is, is a demonstration, and um, this is uh, a demonstration that shows that matter occupies space. and. Thematically across the year, we started with matter and characteristics of matter, change of state of matter from solid to liquid to gas, and then uh, uh, energy and motion topics on the way to past simple machines, ultimately to the roller coaster. Um, and what that teaches about is the distinction between kinetic and potential energy at, at the end of the year. But this is early in the year, and the, the big idea here is matter occupies space. Is there space between the water? No, right? There's water all around, right? Yeah. Okay. Except can go in water. Is there space between the blobs? Look, is there space between yeah. the gloves? There is? There's tiny holes. You're right, there's tiny holes. So let's see what happens. We're gonna do it a little bit at a time so we can see what happens. Pour rocks and sand into this beaker. Wait. What's happening? It's sinking. What's sinking? Rocks. What else is happening? It's Look. moving space through the... Yeah, the sand's going up. It looks like it's going up. But the sand's going up. Because otherwise you'd see more of the rock. Remember how Leon said there's little spaces between the pebbles? Yeah, what is that's the, what I did. What is the sand doing? Going in it. Going in it. It's occupying the space. Bit, that was between, this. and what's happening to what was in between, what was in those little holes between the pebbles? Glass. What was in those little holes? Glass? What do you yeah. think? Yeah. And what is the sand doing? It's moving the air to fill the space in between the marbles. Let's try the water. Chelsea is going to be our finger meter. She is going to measure. Put your finger right there, Chelsea. At the line of the water. Move over a little bit. Okay? At the line of the water. Right there. Okay? And we are going to see what happens when we put in our gloves. Ready? The locks are on the thing. What happened? Don't move your finger, Chelsea. Don't move it. What's happening? The rocks are sinking because Why? the rocks are too heavy. The now, I want you, I want you to see light. Chelsea's finger and what's happening. What's getting bigger? The water. The word, I like what you're thinking. Bigger. It's getting higher. Está subiendo, ¿verdad, Alexis? Here we go. Chelsea's finger is at. 
Can you see? If you can't see, stand up and come look at it. You see where her finger's at? Where's the water at now? What happened to the water? Okay, the, you know, the thoroughness of that kind of a demonstration is, is something that uh, um, a video clip, clip can show. And uh, here's some stopping is there points. there space between the water? No, right, there's water all around, right? Okay. okay, the teacher gathers the children for a second-hand experience, which helps make the science concepts more memorable because they can see the way the physical principles play out. Is there space between the blocks? The teacher asks lots of questions to engage children's attention and focus the experience on the concepts and so on. And, and so. Um, uh, uh, now we want to go to, uh, yeah, this is, this is another of my favorites. Uh, uh, there are different ways of representing understanding and of having experience, learning experiences. There's some overlap here in these categories, and this is a, this is a, uh, uh, a video early in the year uh, um, of, of, of a characteristic of matter, a feature, uh, a distinctive feature of matter, um, uh, uh, and I'll just play Okay, it. those are words, and I want to see how you make those words with your body, and that's going to be kind of tough. So, let's find a place on the ground again. Let's see what we can do with our bodies. Okay. Let me see if you can guess what I'm a piece of uh, a material, and I want to see if by looking at me, if you can tell, if you can describe me, okay? Let's see here. Wait, 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 not yet. I'm not, I'm not ready yet. Watch. Are you ready? Yeah. A piece of wood. A piece of wood. Uh, Am I smooth? Am I bumpy? Am I rough? What would you? How would you describe me? Smooth. Smooth. So you see, with my body, I'm making myself very flat. You would say I'm smooth. But how about if I did this? Bumpy. I could be bumpy. What else? Rough. I could be rough. What else could I be? A stick. A stick is very what? Rough. Rough and. Do I look pointy? Drew, thank you. That's exactly what I wanted. Pointy. Okay. I would like to see. I would like to see a very rough piece of wood. Let me see. Make your bodies a rough piece of wood. Let me see how you do. Wow, Drew is sticking out his hands there. And yet Yuna's got her knees up. Simone has her hands out, and look at Kika's all crushed up. You look pretty rough to me, and look at that. This is great. Raymond, nice. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, I want to see a rough piece of wood. Um, uh, let's see. One of the things that, that, People, um, one of the reasons for for you know this kind of a website is to show capacities of kids um, that sometimes um, we think that they're not capable of, and and uh, this is a nice. Okay, catch that, Julian. This is a nice example of showing kids working together, really cooperating, and persisting in working out. Uh, a, a problem. The problem here is uh, they've built now much of this interclassroom roller coaster. This is toward the end of the year, and and they're debugging the 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 rolling of the ball through the system, and they have to get it uh, arranged so that uh, the ball doesn't get stuck. And uh, just as you watch a little bit, you, you can. 
you can see that the kids just stay with this problem. Right? Yeah, well, anyway, they, they did, this is like two and a half minutes of them continuing to work on, on debugging this, uh, this thing. And that kind of relationship among kids doesn't just happen by accident. That's part of what you have to teach about, is how, how to have a classroom social system in which kids really can can and do help each other and and know how to be genuinely helpful um, and and uh, there's stop button commentary on that that we won't we won't go into but also it's very important uh, to have kids confident enough uh, if you're teaching for understanding um, you all know this now, but uh, in the old 20 years ago, as this 20, 30 years ago, this shift toward teaching more for understanding didn't recognize the face threat problems that go with talking about how you're thinking about something uh, rather than just hollering out or what you think is a right answer, right? And, and so a lot of social work in the classroom needs to go into building a place where kids can say what they really think. And this is an example of Alex. Now this is at the very end of the year and they've built the roller coaster and, and they're putting labels at different parts of the system of the roller coaster showing where kinetic energy is maximized and where potential energy is maximized. And Alex forthrightly says some things about what he's thinking about that, and he isn't quite right. And the teacher realizes it, and it becomes an occasion for reteaching. Well, I don't see why. This is kinetic energy because potential is energy is energy that get, is gaining energy, and kinetic is in a, is leaving. Yeah, and he's confusing velocity and energy, which is a is a high school, you know, physics misconception. But but he, and and the teacher the teacher uh, realizes this. And um, and then um, th well they 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 take it to uh, classroom discussion, and I'm 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 missing a, a a a segment here. I don't quite understand my notes, but. Uh, they take it to a, um, a, 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 a classroom discussion uh, in which Alex and others talk in front of the whole class about, you know, what, what, what are these ideas and, and there's some disagreement about it and, and that's all public and kind of made safe uh, for, for public discussion. Um, and, and Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's it. Yeah, here. They, so they go in and they have this discussion uh, in front of everybody, uh, which could be very face-threatening for Alex, but it isn't.
Yeah, there's this problem of they think that that as the velocity I increases, they're, it's gaining energy, and they're confounding the two things. They check with a parent um, who uh, happens to be a physicist at UCLA, uh, one of the parents, and he comes in and reviews the the notion of the distinction between kinetic and potential energy, and then uh, it goes on from there, and I'll just play this and, and conclude, and, and we can talk a little, if you can stay uh, for just a bit. Okay, so. The faster you go, the more kinetic energy. No, it is not. It is yes. not. Yes. The faster, just, you, the go, faster you go, the, the more? You go, the more the kinetic more energy. energy. Uh, okay. Right. But, but you've never lost energy, right? You always have the same amount of energy, right? It's, it's, hard it's just to gone from one, one form, form to the other. That's, that's what I really need to point out because in order to try to explain it to them, because they kept confusing energy with speed. Right. And I, to try to explain it to them, I said, you know, that they were storing it up and then letting it out. We didn't talk about it, that, that, that it changed, that's just a change. I think there's a little, uh, how do I say this word, misconception. Um, energy and speed are not the same thing. La energía y la velocidad no son lo mismo. Let's just talk about energy. Forget the speed right now, okay? When you are at the top of the mountain, at the top, you're standing at the top of the mountain, what kind of energy do you have? Potential. And that is when you have the most potential energy, when you get to the top. Okay, so we're gaining potential energy, potential energy, potential energy, max potential energy. And the moment it starts coming down, that energy becomes, it's, okay, so it's transforming, kinetic, kinetic, kinetic. When is kinetic energy at its max? Eli, what, show me with your finger. Where? How do you know that? Because then you're not losing speed anymore. Speed? Are you losing speed? Forget speed. Don't go speed. <laughs> Forget you speed. Know, right, right here is where you have maximum kinetic energy. But well, you're stopping at that point. Do you stop? No, you just What happens? Show me with your finger what happens. Here you come. Show me. Give me your finger. Okay? Here you are. Here's the car. Gaining potential, 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 potential. Maximum potential. Kinetic, 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 kinetic. Maximum kinetic. What's happening as you make that turn? What kind of energy? Potential. 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 Okay, so then, uh, uh, in the discussion, uh, somebody says, is this kind of like when we run up and down the hill? Uh, and the teacher says, yes, it is kind of like that. Let's go to the hill. And because this is the lab school, and it's right on campus, and there's this big, uh, big hill, uh, they walk off to the to the hill, and my, uh, I didn't shoot this footage. Uh, the, the camera uh, woman, Susan Giroux, uh, goes right along uh, with the kids, and um, you'll see what happens. I want to see potential energy being transformed to kinetic energy, being transformed to kinetic energy, right? To potential energy, back to kinetic energy, and I want to meet you here at the maximum point of kinetic energy. Okay. Can you turn and I want to hear the words. <laughs> Oh, yeah, some dos. Potato, potato, potato! Potato, 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 potato! 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 Potato,
<laughs> okay, so that, and that's the last day of school. The parents are coming the next day, next to the last day. The parents are going to come and see the, see the the classroom uh, roller coaster and uh, uh, see the labels of where potential and kinetic energy is maximized in the system. And it's the end of the school year. We we started with a rough piece of wood, and and we get all the way to this. Uh, and the, the website is, is trying to show some of the how of, of this kind of teaching. I, it took, I, I'm sorry, it took a little longer to show you than I, than I thought and we started late. But uh, anyway, let's talk about it a little bit. What, what, what you have comments, questions, um, Thoughts. It's really hard. I mean, even with all of this stuff, to actually show the how of this practice is really hard, um, especially if uh, a viewer hadn't ever seen anything like this before. Yes? One of the things I really appreciated was that you were able to catch the teacher as learner yeah. also. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And to then see how she enacted that right. new understanding. Yeah, yeah it, it was actually a happy fault, to quote St. Augustine, <laughs> uh, that, that they had kind of missed this misunderstanding. And then all of a sudden they realize it. And, and not everybody has a physicist that they can call at lunchtime <laughs> to come over and have a literally backstage conference. But, but they did, because and, and, they really cared about the children's understanding. And they figured out some ways to reteach right there on the last days uh, that uh, uh, are, are, yeah. Yeah, I like that, and I like the. I, I said I, I like the the planning scene where they're talking with their mouths full. Uh, that's uh, that's a kind of trust that sometimes people who are trying to portray teaching don't have with with teachers. What else? Yeah. I remember yesterday uh, there was a question uh, by one of our professors here about the IRB relations related yeah. to video. It's, this strikes me as a good answer to that uh, to that question because it's like basically uh, how do you get a school district or an administrator to to back uh, a camera coming into the room and recording and approaching all the parents for consent and the kids if they're old enough for assent? Yeah. How do you get them to back that? when there could be concerns, you know? Um, right. And um, I think it's like you get the teachers on board with the project, you collaborate. Like, like this seems to be an answer, or like part of an answer to that question, uh, to how you do that. Uh, and it's kind of like you're bragging on them too, and the teachers are happy to be part of it. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, for better or for worse, this is a kind of celebratory portrayal of practice. It's not a, 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 a scathing critique, right? Uh, but but it, it, the teachers were very much behind this, and the principal also wanted other people to be able to see this kind of uh, uh, teaching and learning. And the parents um, explicitly gave consent for uh, the footage to be on the internet. So everything was, you know, explicit and straightforward. Nobody, nobody was getting surprised along the way. And we had, um, uh, we had. Uh, uh, you saw. I won't tell you who it was, but one of the kids that you saw on on the footage uh, is the. Uh, the child of a famous movie star. Mm -hmm. And then there's another famous movie star's kid in the room that doesn't happen to have appeared, except actually he, he appears in that big last scene where they're talking about Alex's idea. You didn't see much of that conversation. But, um, 
but uh, by, by uh, a few months in, that parent who hadn't wanted their kid on camera realized that this was a benign thing and, and gave approval. So we had, we had two classrooms of about 24 kids each, and every family approved uh, of, uh, of doing this. Yeah. What I about is, and this strikes me as a good, like, you know, a school district like ours here in Madison is considering just outright, you know, no video cameras in the yeah. classrooms. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, probably that our school event makes a good, we make a good argument for the value of our, of some of our research for the, for the district, but um, maybe this is tied to curriculum assessments or something like that. That seems really, they take advantage of that. But like the ethnography and the video research in the classrooms, like I don't think we're communicating with the district that there's value for them in it. And that's why I feel like this website is what we should take uh, when we have those conversations. Mm -hmm. um, so the question, the question I have though is a little, a little it, I'm, so it's not, a, it, you know, you go in there with this kind of goal and understanding of like sort of showing, you know, the great work that's being done. And then what, but the video, as you mentioned, yes, it stays around, right? And it can be repurposed, re-textualized. And so what happens when you, or if you, you know, somewhere in that video turns up something really important and worthy of like serious criticism? Um, and that's there, you know, and then you feel like some kind of an, you feel some kind of a, a conflict about it, um, you know. So I'm wondering like how much critical uh, distance or uh, so it's like you get by getting by by this kind of collaboration has so many benefits but then there's also the issue of you know the scholarly kind of impetus to be yeah well that's the downside I think that the, this kind of close collaboration sacrifices a critical uh, edge right and uh, my work has been criticized for that over the years, and I've been too easy on teachers. Um, but, um, but then the, the, the flip side of that is that uh, the affordance is that uh, I, I, I think if you, I hope you will visit this some and look at it more, and I think you will, I hope you will get, uh, feel that 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 this kind of represents the teachers' voices. There's the, the, it really was teacher written with a wonderful editor of, of of publications at the lab school who's really good at working with teachers and and in helping kind of midwife their writing. But uh, but it, it's we really tried to avoid sounding like um, educational researchers from the <laughs> the College of Education. We were we were trying to have this be kind of teachers communicating with other teachers about how you do this kind of thing, and 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 you don't you don't get that from. A critical ethnography, <laughs> you know. So everything, everything is a trade-off. Um, uh, yeah. Have you screened this with teachers? Have you gotten feedback from teachers and what they, yeah, we, what they took away from it? What are we we've done well. It's been used uh, a couple of ways. We we did a bit of of user testing. Uh, but we, by the time we got to that, we, we had an NF, NSF grant to actually make the website op, operative. And by the time we got to um, user studies, um, we, we, were, we ran out of money. <laughs> and I was retiring and it, it, we just couldn't do as much of that as I would have liked to. But, but we walked through with, we watched people navigating uh, for themselves and, and uh, uh, interviewed them as they were using it and got some uh, insight from that. And then um, Lisa, the, the, I want to see a rough piece of wood teacher, um, 
has has become a kind of a, a, a teacher developer. She's going around to various school districts, uh, working uh, with them on this kind of early grades science teaching, and 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 she's used this uh, as as an adjunct to her own kind of professional development uh, uh, teaching. Uh, so, but we but we don't have as much of the the user study as 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 we might. We're going to try to build that in if we can. The Caslon people take take this over. We uh, so that we could uh, uh, revise and add to it and, and and continue to work with it. Yes, Leslie. So I have two questions, and both of them require a short preface. Um, I've done some work internationally in Tanzania and in Kenya with groups, including Bethany, on um, teacher professional development. And a lot of the feedback that we get when we present that work is, you can't prescribe pedagogical approaches. This is not a pedagogical approach, you know, more inquiry-based learning. Mm -hmm. It's not a pedagogical approach that's culturally or materially appropriate, et cetera, et cetera. Um, linked to that, I've seen a lot of critiques of the like Danielson framework and the Doug Lamov Teach Like a Champion sort of work that says you can't extract good teaching from context. Good teaching is always contextual. We can't prescribe good teaching. So the, there's a cultural approach and there's kind of a less culturalist but more context driven approach. Right. So my first question is. Can we talk about good teaching separate from context? It's a, a sort of a big question, but it's one that I thought about, you know, this is a very specific school, it's a very specific student population. Um, my second question uh, is more about the teaching versus learning. Mm -hmm. Because I think what you show us in these clips and with the website is the teacher's intent, the teacher's intention. The teacher chose to right. do this in order to facilitate right. this. But we don't really know what the impact of those decisions was. There's no real claim made in the materials about learning. Yeah. And so I guess my big question is, as anthropologists of education, are we, can we talk about learning? And if so, how do we do it? Well, there is. I didn't show, you know, everything. Uh, there's a whole lot more in here than I, than I was able to show. There, under the representations uh, component, there, there, there is quite a bit of material that you could call evidence of kids learning from the the different kinds of projects that uh, that uh, uh, or, or assignments that they do. And yesterday I showed Eli's modeling in clay and Eli's uh, little essay that he wrote as evidence of, of learning. So we have some things like that in here, but you're right, this shows more the provision of opportunity to learn than learning. And I think lots of descriptions of classrooms are much more about that than about actual learning. Um, we would have to follow Eli, you know, microgenetically uh, all through the year to to make really strong claims about that. But um, that 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 so that that's one thing. There is some evidence about learning. There's also um, something I didn't show you. Um, um, those little icons on the upper right hand side. Uh, include one on on um, um, uh, difficulties in implementation and things to think about if you want to do more of something. And there's a bunch of written comment all over the place about uh, and frequently asked questions. There's a whole thing with kind of imaginary dialogue with users like. My principal won't let me do this. You know, what do I? You know, what do I do about that? Or, or a whole host of, of things like that 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 are 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 meant to uh, kind of help people think about 
how they might adopt and adapt some of this. I mean, the aim of this wasn't to get people to imitate exactly this approach, but how to think about working with first-hand and second-hand experiences and certain multiple semiotic ways of representing understanding and so on, and, and following through on key ideas uh, over time and thematically, sequentially building on uh, on topics across the year. That, at that level, I think, you know, there are things about pedagogy um, that, uh, that are transportable, but it's not imitation. It's not cookie cutter replication. It's, this was uh, a, an attempt to present kind of heuristically um, some illustration of an approach that then any teacher would have to grow and adopt for themselves. So, I mean, we were very, we were very clear about not wanting to make it look like, you know, if you just give the kids a hammer uh, after they tried to use the nail, you know, that that kind of. Uh, 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 instructional tricks, sort of a bag of instructional tricks approach, we, we really didn't want to show. And, and so I think, you know, I mean, as I think about my own uh, instruction, there's always been planning, there's always some kind of, even in a college classroom, there's physical space that can be used better or worse in worse ways. There's there's relationships among students and social relationships between teachers and students that need to be attended to and and there's ways of of judging whether kids are understanding what you're trying to teach in graduate seminars and and so so at that level of generality i mean the the ecosystem of the provision of instruction is something that uh, that 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 translates, but but it's not it's not um, um, a simple set of tricks that can be easily exportable all over the place. I mean that's the whole other way of thinking about how you get educational change. Uh, I mean I'm deeply committed to the idea that 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 learning environments are ways of life and uh, people have to grow those right, uh, locally uh, each time. But that doesn't mean you have to reinvent the wheel, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's the t I think that's a fundamental tension in both pre-service and uh, continuing professional uh, education for teachers. You had raised... I was just thinking about, uh, like, I, I, had a, I had a paper that was in review three times at the journal, uh, JLS, Journal of Learning Sciences, mm -hmm. uh, which was you know, based on, it was teacher-student interactions in classrooms, and we gave evidence of this like uptake, like, like you gave yesterday, where the, where the, the kids started dancing, because they were sort of uptake in the yeah. pedagogy. And, and I think, like, when the, your question about, like, can anthropologists talk, talk about learning, it just, it kind of depends on who we're talking to, because mm -hmm. JLS would not have it. Yeah. After three reviews, uh, three resubmissions, they were just like, you know, this should go to a teaching journal. Um, I, it, but anthropology, like if you if you give evidence of sort of iterative practices in, um, over time, even over short periods of time, I feel like I feel like we would be happy that that's learned, you know, in some set journalized sense. But um, but yeah, it's totally and you know, and JLS is way higher impact in terms of like education. Research than an anthro type of journal. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just had that experience. That it just depends on the audience. So I you guess. need to write an article for them that's titled "What Counts as Evidence mm -hmm. of Learning," and just take yeah. that on. There would be some if we had some mm -hmm. clarity about how like this kind of evidence that Fred is showing could be considered evidence of learning for like the education, the learning science audience. Mm -hmm. I think. They don't, they're not buying it, though. 
right now. I'm not buying what they're selling right. either. Right. Right? right? So I think you could sort of, here's what you think counts seven or right. what many, mm -hmm. yeah. what this group and this group and this group, and here's how it's flawed. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I have a question. I pre I really appreciate uh, the website you show us. A little louder, please. I really appreciate uh, uh, the website you show us. Uh, so when I see the um, the the website, especially on the left uh, left side, I'm thinking some things like as someone who studied curriculum. I, I find uh, those seem like planning, set up, culture, you know, representation. It's really matched uh, uh, some curriculum theme. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, the space you show us make me think about one of the big um, argument in curriculum series called like uh, curriculum as a environmental design. So, uh, I my question is. Uh, um, I find these these things, uh, uh, number of things, make me think about uh, uh, as a researcher. You know, when we analyze the data, whatever from the field notes, from the interviewed, we analyze that uh, you know into a code, a category, and a theme. This uh, website show really show me these themes, categories, and a code, something like that. But my question is, it seems to me the website really shows the positive, positive findings from. Uh, from the videos. I'm sure you, you may get some uh, maybe negative things or negative findings uh, from your research. So my question is how can you present, represent or present the complicated things as you mentioned at the beginning of your talk, you said like uh, the big question is how complicated, how to show the complicated teaching you now, how complicated the process is. So. How how do you deal with the the negative <laughs> findings from the video video um, data from your research? So I'm not quite sure that I understand the question, um, but this and and so this may not be a responsive answer, but. But I really didn't think of this, and this may have been a mistake. I'm 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 now wondering about this for a couple of years uh, in kind of retrospect. I didn't think about this as formal research. I really thought about this as helping some teachers show other teachers about how they do what they do. You know. And, um, but in fact, a lot of reflection went into it. And the teachers themselves said that as they thought about what should go into this and what not, and, and working on the writing of the commentary and so on, uh, that they got insights into their own teaching that, that they hadn't had before they found working on the website was a really important developmental experience for them. Um, and that happened without, you know, kind of formal um, research. And, and even, um, you may or may not have noticed, but I bet Matt did, uh, that the uh, little captions that appear uh, aren't always exactly what people said, you know. And in my sociolinguistic uh, science uh, identity, you know, I would try to have a transcript that was as absolutely accurate as possible with, with all that. Uh, and I might code and, you know, do various things. Uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't do that. And, and in fact, we've, uh, and another thing that is different from my formal research is that I've almost never um, edited um, clips together that remove time sequence in between, but we ended up doing quite a little of that. It's still, it's still pretty much like unedited footage, but there were, you could see every now and then there were these 
scene changes uh, that's much more like uh, a narrative documentary uh, footage than, than the kind of research footage that I'm more used to dealing with. And, and for those reasons, I kept feeling like, well, this is something different from formal research. Uh, but it certainly involved a lot of reflection. And so, and, and as I say, the teachers felt like they were, you know, we didn't call it teacher research, but uh, literally, but, but they certainly reported uh, uh, an increased sense of, of, of a recognition of how they did what they did. And actually that was, that was very satisfying for us. Uh, um, anyway, that, I think that's the best I can, I can do by way of an answer. Anything else? Actually, there is a, like, I'm not sure, have you heard like TPA, teacher performance assessment? You know, I know uh, about it. Developed by uh, Stanford University. They use a similar function of the video clip, ask uh, student teachers to take uh, a short uh, video clip, do the same thing, and write a comment, uh, commentary to reflect on their teaching. I feel like, uh, um, there is uh, some similarity between um, between that website. And what do you? Yeah. Think well, I that? know some of those people. There's no accident. There's been some cross fertilization, and the people at at uh, University of Michigan also with with uh, teaching math. Deborah Ball is a former student of mine, and so so was Magdalene Lampert. Uh, so it's no accident that there's some kind of uh, uh, influence here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we're at, at time, but yes. thank you so much. Yeah. You're very welcome. Thank you. And I'm serious. If if you have some comments, you want to email me. I'd really appreciate some dialogue on this. We didn't have as much of that as I had anticipated, but but that was partly because we started a bit late. Anyway, thank you for coming.